All right, so just kind of a, a, as a general view, and I want to talk about um, Einstein's postulates again. And notice that I am using a plural here. So Einstein's not just postulate, but there's actually two uh, postulates. And as we said, uh, number one, the laws of physics are the same in every reference frame. So this is just completely shorthand. So the laws of physics are the same in every reference frame. And more specifically, as a result of the uh, michelson morley experiment, which by the way, I did find my copy of uh, Michelson's textbook here. Um, so as a result of the michelson morley experiment, we now know not only are the laws of physics the same, and that's a theoretical assumption, but we have experimental data showing that the speed of light is the same, no matter what reference frame you're looking at from. If you're moving through the, through the universe this way and you see a, a beam of light coming there, you're gonna measure it to be exactly the same speed as you're moving this way and see a beam, beam of light coming there. No matter which way you're moving, no matter which way you're looking, we will always measure light to be traveling at the same speed. That's the fundamental importance of the Michelson-Morley experiment. So it's a two-part assumption. The laws of physics are the same. And more specifically, we measure the speed of light to be the same in all reference frames. So this actually leads us to a very interesting dilemma here. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm going to kind of skip the review of the rest of um, uh, lecture one here for a moment, because I, this is a natural leaping ground to our next thought experiment. So. And by the way, um, the, Einstein was German. He spoke, he spoke German, of course. And so his term for this thought experiment, it's an experiment he does entirely in his head. So you kind of predict the results based on basic assumptions of the universe. So his term for this was a Gedanken experiment. And you have to say that with an angry German accent, like a Gedanken experiment. I, I will write that up here. G-A-D-A-N-K-E-N experiment. Or the plural will be uh, Gedanken experimenting. <laughs> um, so anyway, his, his Gedanken experiment uh, was, was as follows. And I think this is one of like the most amazing, you know, conceptual, conceptually simple, but like the results are, are you know, completely unexpected. Uh, examples of like how you can approach any problem in, in all of science. So we are going to consider a, um, a spaceship here. And let's see, here is our spaceship. And that might be the best spaceship I've ever drawn. And we have some observer here inside the spaceship. It kind of looks like a sandal, whatever. Um, but this observer inside the spaceship is going to set up some, some experiment where they, they insert into the hole, they put a little like light emitting diode or some sort of a light emit emitting device. And at the push of a button, it emits a single wave of light or, or the fastest, you know, the, the shortest pulse of light that it can, which I'll draw it in red. Um, we see that this person would, if he could watch, watch in slow motion, see that beam of light go from the floor to the ceiling. And now he has added a light detector in the ceiling. So this will measure exactly the time delay from when the light is emitted until it's absorbed. So again, he has you know, some timer, some watch. The light is emitted, the light is received. Now, um, I, I'm tempted as someone who's talking from the year 2021 to use the word photon here. Um, we are not there yet because the, the, the full quantum revolution hadn't happened. Um, Arguably, the photon was also Einstein's idea. I mean, there's, there's uh, a number of physicists that kind of uh, grappled with the same time. But Einstein didn't talk in terms of photons because he hadn't invented that yet. So just a wave of light passes up there. And now the other thing we happen to know is that the height of this spaceship here, at least from you know, floor to ceiling, is a length. And I'm going to call this L. Um, and it, OK, I'll, I'll end up changing it later. But yeah, it's just a, a length of L. And 
So basically he can measure, if he knows the height, he can measure how long it takes um, the, the time to go or the, the light to go from the floor to the ceiling. Now, at the same time, this, this spaceship here very well might be traveling, you know, something like, let's say, 0.9 C. So the spaceship's zooming by at 90% of the speed of light. And let's actually give this a term. We'll, we'll say this is the velocity V. So the velocity of the spaceship relative to our Earth frame here is, and, and so I, I'm also not using the terms like S and S prime. Um, and you'll see why I think in a previous lecture, we, we had talked about like the coordinate frames, coordinate system being S and S prime. I'm gonna talk about the Earth frame and the spaceship frame to be entirely clear. Spaceship and Earth. So the observer standing here on Earth is gonna see something very different. So think about what, what motion he would see the light to make from his frame reference where he's standing still on the earth and that guy is zooming past. So during that time interval from when the photon, sorry, from when the light is emitted until the light is absorbed, the person in the spaceship is gonna see it you know, rise straight up. His spaceship doesn't have, have windows. He doesn't really see the earth passing by. But the person here is going to see a very different trajectory for that light wave. And specifically, I will draw that in green. The light isn't just going to go up because from the moment the light is emitted at the base until the moment it's absorbed at the top, the whole spaceship has moved forward. So I'm going to try to kind of interlay that over here. And here's my, here's my new spaceship. So this is the final position of the spaceship later on, right there. And so the path that the light must have taken, and I've completely over-exaggerated this, by the way, it wouldn't have moved nearly this far relative to the height. Who cares? So instead, what he's going to see is the light is going to take a angle path until it hits the detector there. Do you see where we're going to start having some problems now? The two observers disagree on the distance the light has taken. And I'm gonna call this distance here. So we've already labeled the height L. So I'm just gonna call the distance here simply L. Now, what would that distance be here? So the way to deal with that, now I'm gonna undo my green spaceship here. The way to figure out what distance that blue line takes is simply just make a triangle out of it. So we know that this side of the right triangle is going to be L. Now we have some other side of the triangle. This horizontal length has to cor correspond to something that we already know. And specifically, if the spaceship is traveling at a velocity of V over a time interval delta T, it goes a distance of V delta T. And it's, it's really no more difficult than that. So we have V, sorry, um, V delta T. Now, using simple Pythagorean geometry, if you have one length of the triangle L, the other V delta T, the overall length here, and I'm going to call L sub E for the Earth's, the, the, the length that the Earth observer measures, is going to be square root of L squared plus V squared delta T squared. So I hope you can see where that kind of disagreement comes in and why that's going to be so significant. And so specifically, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, based on the values that we have here, now we have a, we have a measured delta T. We're going to assume that we know that. And we now have measured values for the height that one, the distance one observer will see it, the distance some other observer will see it. So what question can we ask now? We're going to ask, what speed does each observer measure for light? In other words, what's the speed of light? What are each of these two observers, the, the, the spaceship observer and the Earth observer, 
going to report as their value of C based on based on the measurements we have just made. And it's kind of weird what we get out. So, so this actually becomes a fairly straightforward you know, question to answer. How fast does the spaceship observer measure C to be? How fast does the Earth drive measure C to be? And so let's start with the C sub E. I'm sorry, uh, C sub yeah, SS for the spaceship observers measured speed of light. Yeah, you can see that there. Pretty straightforward. Distance divided by time. L over delta T. I mean, literally, no more to quote than that. Now, for the Earth's observed speed of light, this now becomes whatever distance he observed, which is the square root of L squared plus V squared delta T squared over delta T. Make sense? We don't need to simplify that. All we need to do is look at this and say, hey, that doesn't match that. It, it's no more difficult than that. Because if now all of a sudden we, we analyze these two results, this is a problem. CSS does not equal CE. And we can say even a little more precisely, which of these two values would we say is greater? In this case here, we have L over delta T. And here we have this whole, uh, the, the whole denominator of the fraction is greater than L. It's L plus a little bit more. And that's what I was going to try to expand it out to see that extra addition part. It doesn't matter because it's simply greater than what the spaceship observer says it is. And that makes sense. If you're standing on Earth, you're going to see light go a further distance than, uh, than the person who has seen it just go straight up. So you see a greater distance, and therefore, you would have to say it goes faster because you're seeing it go a further distance in this, the same time interval. This is a problem. And specifically, why is it a problem? What does this disobey? This guy's law. This disobeys the experimental results from the Michelson-Morley experiment. And then therefore, Einstein's second postulate. So what did we do wrong? How did we derive something that seems to be correct and get the completely wrong result that doesn't agree with the universe? What assumptions do we make? Those guys who are wrong, feel free to. Do you have any guess how we can rectify this here? It's kind of a fun exercise to figure out what what assumption we made that might not hold that caused everything else to go haywire. You're treating time like it's a constant. Yeah, time doesn't remain the same. Okay, so I want to use a slightly, slightly different word than constant, but... Or true, like it's the same for everyone in every situation. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm assuming that the, um, the, the rate of time flow is going to be the same, right. is ultimately what it comes down to. And so again, just to, just to reiterate, reiterate, the fundamental mistake we made was that when we when we looked at the the different observers, the spaceship observer and the time, the Earth observer, we assumed that whatever the measurement the spaceship observer made from the ground to the uh, ceiling is going to hold for all universal observers. That's not true, or at least that's the direct problem that led us to this. We assume that whatever delta t is there, delta t is going to be the same there, and if that's true, we have no other choice. But to show that, but or but to predict that speed of light will be measured differently, that's experimentally wrong. So once we now recognize that we might have different delta t's for different observers, which, by the way, if you think about that conceptually, that should completely blow your mind. It should not be the case that that my clock goes a different rate as yours. That's, that's literally what that means. But that seems to be the correction we need to make for this. Um, so. Once we make that change, we can solve this and, and actually find some consistent way to uh, view the speed of light at the expense of allowing my clock to run faster or slower than yours. I mean, like to me, that's mind boggling. You shouldn't have different rates of time depending on who you are. But that's exactly what just this basic experiment shows. You know, and imagine being the first person in the world to ever kind of run this through in your mind and realize that something has to give. And you're, you, it turns out, the thing that 
fixes it is by time running differently. Like who who would accept that as, as, as even mildly like, like I would be in an insane asylum if I went around saying that 150 years ago, you know? So anyway, um, what we want to do here is answer the question, what if delta t for the spaceship observer is not the, the same as the Earth observer? And that's where I want to go with this. So now what, we, what we're going to do, we're going to do the same exact calculations here, except I'm going to directly label those two things. The assumption I'm going to make, though, if we allow those to be different, I'm going to say if the speed of light is the same for both. So I'm going to change my assumptions from delta t's being the same to c's being the same. We're gonna, I guess we're going to assume ce has to equal css now. So if Einstein's postulates are right, we know this also has to be right, that those two things can't be equal. And now we're going to ask how we can relate one to the other. So that's what I'm going to try to show here. And this is where we get the, the, the concept. I'm not going to use the word yet, but the, 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 the concept that like is your first step to your mind getting blown like mathematically seeing how it works and what that actually means about the universe. So first of all, for delta T spaceship, I'm just going to do that calculation here. We have, um, actually, let me, I'm going to rearrange this pad. C spaceship equals L over delta T spaceship. And pretty clearly at this point, you can just do the cross multiplication. Um, and so delta T S S equals L over C S S. And by the way, we really shouldn't need to write the subscripts for C because we're assuming them to be the same. So let's go ahead and just call both of those C. So this is in the spaceship observer's frame of reference, his version of C, which we are going to call C because they're the same equals that. So we had previously said for the Earth observer, the um, this is the equation that we'd have. Oops. Delta T Earth equals, and this expression was L squared plus V squared delta T squared over C. And again, this would be C E, but we're assuming them to be the same, so we don't need to distinguish them. And just rearranging this a little bit, um, what we want to get here, we want to relate delta T E to delta or delta T S S. So we see there's a little bit of rearrangement that we have to do here because we have a delta T on the left hand side, but we also have one hidden inside that radical. So we're just going to expand things out, multiply both sides by 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 c, take the square root of both, or take uh, the the square of both sides. So here's the next step. We're going to have a couple of steps in my head. C squared delta t e squared equals l squared plus b squared delta t squared. Again, multiply both sides by c, squared both sides. Now again, what we're after here, we're trying to collect all instances of delta T E. I need to label that correctly. That's also T E. So at this point here, collecting like terms, I'm going to pull those over to the left hand side. So I'm going to write delta T E squared times, and now that the factors that are multiplying it are C squared plus B squared. And now the right hand side, the only remaining term is L squared. Now, this becomes a little bit fun because uh, where do I want to go next here? Yeah. OK, um, the where I want to go next is I'm going to pull delta T e squared uh, out. And that's going to be on the left hand side. Divide both sides by that. And so the way I'm going to write that is 1 over c squared plus v squared times L squared. And then I'm going to work on the right hand side just a little bit here. So now instead of instead of the C squared being inside the brackets or inside the parentheses, what I want to do now 
is pull that c squared out. So I have c squared times 1 plus v over c squared. Now I'm just I'm collecting this. Obviously, they're both squared there. And then I have the L squared. And the left hand side of this is still delta T E squared. So the last, the, the two steps left here, the last two things we have to do, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So take the square to the left, square to the right. And for convenience, I'm going to move that delta C squared over here. So I'm just, I'm keeping on the bottom side of the fraction and I have a delta C squared there. I've, I've just moved it there. It's still within the radical. So I hope you see where we're going now. The left-hand side, which I'm now going to write back over here. The left-hand side becomes delta T E. The right-hand side, I'm going to divide this into two parts. So it becomes 1 over square root of 1 plus v over c squared. And then the square root of l squared over c squared is just l over c. Now, here's the last connection. Do you see why I wrote this exactly where I did? Have we seen the, the ratio l over c before? Yeah, right there. And the reason why keeping those c's unlabeled is important because this length here and that value c, they both agree on. So this thing here, I can now literally substitute for that. So this whole equation, and by the way, have you seen this before? 1 over the square root of v squared over c squared. That's exactly what we call that factor gamma in our Lorentz transformations. And it, isn't that crazy how that just randomly appears here? It, it's actually a Pythagorean result. And that's exactly the same gammas that go into the Lorentz uh, uh, transformations. And that's exactly the same gammas that we find all over Einstein's equations. So this now becomes simply just gamma times delta t spaceship. We've just proven time dilation without anything better, you know, stronger than uh, uh, basic algebra and geometry. So let me kind of collect this into um, one main central equation here. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on this? Like, I, I, the first time I saw this was that I was just blown away. <laughs> 